Thanks for staying with us on News Hub. We're still trying to analyze possible threat to the electionary campaigns going on now and the electoral process generally, which will culminate into what the results will be churned out by your votes, through your votes in 2023. Uh, we're taking a look at those technology-driven uh, aspects of the electoral process that must be totally and fully paid attention to so that elections will be as credible as needed in the country. We still, uh, we still have a guest with us in Port Harcourt. Daniel Mathers. Mathias is lecturer at River State University. Daniel, once again, nice to have you with us on News Hub. We also have Bruce Lucas, founder, CEO of Lotus Square, a tech innovation uh, you know, expert across the Niger Delta region. We thank you very much for your time and thoughts on the program. In the course of this show, before we end it, we want to show uh, the attacks that have been constantly, uh, you know, hit, the, the INEC offices that have been constantly hit in the past months. I want to see how this can impact the, the process towards 2023. Let me begin with you, uh, Daniel Matthias. What, what are you looking at with all of these attacks on INEC facilities across the country? And what impact do you think it would have moving forward? Well, the impact it definitely have on the populace is that uh, it will create fear. As to say that uh, people are out there waiting to see what they can be able to or do to be able to either discredit uh, the INEC chairman or the INEC process, uh, the INEC uh, as a whole. Because uh, when things are coming up like this, it's simply it's a signal to say that apart from this, we're ready to see in case it is not in our favor, we're ready to do some certain things that will, that will definitely disrupt the election. So all they need to do is to see how they can, they, it's like a wake up call, making them have understanding that there's something that is at stake and they need to beef up security to see that that don't occur on the election day. Okay, Bruce, um, let's get your perspective on this then. Um, the cards are being uh, destroyed uh, during the curse of this inferno is recorded in some parts of the country. But INEC is reassuring that they can print all of the cards before the elections take place and distribute them. We know that banks can deliver you a card in less than 24 hours. That we know. But do you think that this can be replicated on a large-scale level, as such as the elections? Uh, yes, I think I think that can be done, right? And I think what the banks are doing too is not different from what um, is not far different from what the INEC is doing with PVCs, right? These are simple cards, and then any encryption level on those cards are established by the same machines that are used to print these cards. And so you could print a lot of these cards in one day, and then go over to the logistics concern of distributing them. So I, I think that can be done, and the recovery from all the damaged um, uh, de uh, devices or cards can be reestablished before the time of the election. Like I said, it's always the will, right? It's always the will. And the thing they say about small companies and big companies is the bureaucracy how much authorization, how much letters, how much authority, uh, what, what's the process to disbursement, what's the process to get things done. When the process is longer, then printing one card can take two weeks. When the process is longer internally for authorization or disbursement for that to be done. But when it's a smaller unit and the authorization is faster, printing one card can be one second, right? So I think the process within INEC can be reduced so much that uh, printing these cards can happen faster and delivered faster. But yes, I know they can recover from this as fast as possible. And then probably in further elections, they can look at doubling down, intensifying the technology so much that if somebody comes without a card, the person can still be identified with the same facial recognition they're using to validate you or the same thumbprints that is used to validate you. You, can, you should still be able to be validated with these things without you necessarily having your PVC. So at further elections, they can look at extending 
the, uh, the level of technology they are using, but at this time, I'm sure they can recover from the print of the cards. I mean, uh, we had uh, the INEC chairman was in Abuja, the Muslim capital, on Tuesday, and to examine what happened there, where attackers hit uh, on their facility and assess the level of destruction of the property there. He says that regardless of whatever these attackers do, that the commission are uh, ever ready to conduct the 2023 general elections. Uh, what are the worries that you may have as an electorate as to? Uh, why these uh, attacks are going on and the um, materials there. How sensitive uh, are these materials to all of this destruction? Because I saw that Wilson also, a couple of these materials that weren't uh, totally burnt or maybe they weren't burnt but should have been in that inferno. Uh, are there ways that such fires could compromise the, uh, you know, the validity of any of these uh, materials that could be used on the election day, to the best of your knowledge as a technology expert. Um, so I, I think what INEC is doing is what's called a hybrid system. So they have the electronic part and then they have the manual part where you still have to turn print and ballot papers are still provided and the units are still provided so they they have a little bit of the hybrid system so what you're seeing really affected at this moment is the manual part the manual system that complements the electronic parts right so the beaver systems are still locked up somewhere and secured and not made available even to the INEX staff across the country. And so on the day of election, when those electronic devices come out and are connected on the network to start validation and all that, nothing is affected. But what we are seeing affected by the inferno across uh, in the different attacks is will be the ballot papers, the units, the boxes, and those other things that account for the manual part of the voting process and those things can be printed more quantities of those those things can be delivered in different units as it were so if a particular um, area or a particular state needs uh, 3,000 of those they can ship out 3,500 of those and see that uh, more is made available whenever there's a defect in any of them so when the manual part is handled the electronic part can also be handled, and I don't see much of the effect there, unless what happens now is the PVCs themselves that is needed for the validation. So, which means the PVC is actually what um, what sits between the manual system and the digital system. So, that PVC being destroyed and not made available to the electorate become the major part of the problem because you cannot bridge that gap to use the electronic system to uh, validate these voters and you can't bridge that gap to give them access to that physical form or that physical ballot paper that they can turn print on. So the PVCs are what I see affecting the process when it comes to an inferno. But except for that, I think uh, there are two different systems and making provisions for the manual systems or bowling, uh, ballot boxes and so on can always be attended to as they move ahead with the planning. Okay, Mr. Matthias, I'm, I'm sure you are itching to give a response to that question um, with regards to getting the PVCs ready. Concerns then would be that um, if all of this can be gotten or printed uh, as being said, Redistribution to the different locations is another challenge, one that we cannot even solve at the moment. INEC keeps reporting of hundreds of thousands of PVCs uncollected across the country. So it appears that the intent of this fire incident may just be working to sabotage voters uh, from going about prosecuting the election in 2023. I think uh, what INEC will definitely do to be able to prevent that aspect, because just as you mentioned, uh, getting it done and then beginning to kind of like transport it to the various states, um, to be able to ease up this is to see a way of seeing how to get that particular machine that is actually printing the, providing the PVC to the various states and see how that could be done. So uh, to avoid this issue about uh, talking about uh, 
printing and then beginning to transport to the various uh, uh, states because uh, these things are like for I, I may probably say I've not even gotten mine and yet to have my own uh, PVC because I've gone to uh, kind of like uh, revalidate my uh, my uh, data because uh, somehow I lost uh, mine and so the only thing is to see that if they can take the various machine to the various states and then do that as quickly as possible because time is not that uh, it's just a lesson is just uh, how many uh, days so the best thing for them to do is either they do it and then ship it just as my colleague uh, just you know mentioned as to say that uh, that can be just as the bank do, can give you a PVC on that particular day they can reprint this and then deliver it on time and make sure that pep uh, various persons who are involved get their PVC on time. Those who haven't gotten are still waiting to see how they can get their decision. So it's, it's, it's actually a concern. It's a worry. Like I just said, I have not gotten mine. So I'm still waiting. Others are still waiting and they are destroying the ones that they say they've actually provided. What actually stopped them from distributing it before this time? So that's just a, a, a concern. I next should just act fast. I next should act fast, except maybe there is a sabotage within the INEC that is trying to kind of like, you know, because it, they, you never can tell. The politicians have their men all over as will see a way to be able to sabotage a process of food that they don't want it take place uh, to be able to uh, achieve their aim. So INEC should just definitely act fast because it's not something like uh, that is going to take so much this thing. Knowing too well that this has happened, they should just make sure that these are uh, utilize the machine to print this thing as quickly as possible and then distribute it. All right. So that people can have confidence that yes, the election will be credible. Thank you so much, uh, Danny Matthias, lecturer with River State University. We thank you for your time and thoughts on News Hub today. We also want to thank you very much at Bruce Lucas, founder and CEO of Olutu Square Tech Innovation Hub across Niger Delta region. We thank you for your time and thoughts on the show as well. Thank you, gentlemen, once again for being part of the program. All right, so thank you. Uh, thank you. Goodbye, but I got uh, back to everywhere. Uh, <laughs> what a conversation we had to Absolutely. ask with the two people. One, an academic uh, who has technology, uh, you know, you know, has, you know, uh, expertise in the area of technology, and mm. one who practices every day. I would easily tell us the worries that Nigerians might have with regards to how technology would shape mm -hmm. the 2023 general election. So that, that's been the discussion today. Absolutely, and quite interesting. And I'm, I'm, I'm quite, I'm quite excited that we're having a special focus um, on the elections today. Uh, so that the people are aware and we continue to keep you updated on the latest developments ahead of the elections just so you had any doubts whatsoever and also to present the electoral umpire with all the information that they need to prosecute the election successfully. It's been a fantastic show, Shil. Absolutely. I want to thank our viewers for making us a choice. Uh, we'll, we'll promise to do better tomorrow. Do join us again on News Hub to everyone who called in. And all of our viewers, everyone, every stakeholder here, because we have so many. Thank <laughs> you so much for being part of the show. I'm Sharon Oye. Did you have a beautiful day? And I'm Wilson Amoni. Have a fantastic day.